Okay, uh, good afternoon. Let us continue our discussion on negotiable instrument law. Okay, uh, nag-stop tayo before sa material alteration. Okay, now let us define first yung bill of exchange. Yung definition of uh, bill of exchange, okay, nakalagay sa section 126. Sabi dyan na, bill of exchange daw is unconditional order in writing addressed by one person to another, signed by the person giving it, requiring the person to meet its address to pay on demand, or at a fixed or determinable future time, a sum certain in money, to order or to bearer. Ngayon, pag tinanong kayo, what are the requisite of a negotiable will of exchange, mag-cross-refer lang kayo ulit sa section 1. First, it must be in writing and signed by the drawer. Second, it must contain unconditional order to pay a sum certain in money. Number three, it must be payable on demand or at a fixed or determinable future time. Number four, it must be payable to order or bearer. And last, when the bill is addressed to a drawee, he must be named or otherwise indicated therein with reasonable certainty. Okay, now there are two kinds of uh, bill of exchange. First, yung tinatawag na inland bill. And second is the foreign bill. Okay, ako yung dinefine lang sa batas is yung inland bill. Yung inland bill daw, ito raw yung bill of exchange which are both drawn and payable within the Philippines. Kaya pag tinin mo yung definition ng foreign bill of exchange, any other bill is a foreign bill. In other words, if the bill of exchange is drawn in the Philippines pero payable abroad or drawn abroad, payable in the Philippines or both drawn and payable abroad, lahat yun ay considered as foreign bill. Kasi para maging inland bill siya, it must be both drawn and payable within the Philippines. Pero tingnan mo yung nakalagay doon sa may okay, last paragraph. Unless the contrary appears on the face of the bill, the holder may treat it as an inland bill. Ibig sabihin kahit na foreign bill siya, pero hindi siya nag-appear sa face ng instrument, then the holder may treat it as an inland bill. Kaya ibig sabihin hindi required ang protest. Kaya labalabas ang protest, required lang siya kapag foreign bill of exchange appearing on his face, then is honored by an acceptance, it must be protested for an acceptance. Or pangalawa, foreign bill of exchange siya appearing on his face, then is honored by non-payment, it must be protested for non-payment. Otherwise, the drawer and its endorsers are discharged. Okay, itong section 131, referring case of need, dinifine lang dyan. The drawer of a bill daw and any endorser may insert thereon the name of a person to whom the holder may resort in case of need. That is to say, in case the bill is dishonored by non-acceptance or non-payment. Now, such person is called the referee in case of need. It is in the option of the holder to resort to referee in case of need or not as he may see fit. Okay, now let us proceed now sa acceptance. <clears throat> Sabi ng section 132, the acceptance of a bill is the signification by the drawee of his assent to the order of the drawer. The acceptance must be in writing. Take note, there is no such thing as oral acceptance kasi dapat the acceptance must be in writing and signed by the drawing. Kasi kung unsigned document yan, produce no effect whatsoever. Okay, it must express that the drawing will perform his promise by any other means than payment of money. Kailangan nilagay mo do, accepted signature, that is a sufficient acceptance. Pero kung ginawa kong accepted, payable 10 sacks of rice, that is not good acceptance. Kasi sabi yan, it must not express that the drawee will perform his promise by any other means than payment of money. Now, the holder of a bill presenting the same for acceptance may require that the acceptance be written on the bill and if such request is refused, may treat the bill as dishonored. Kaya ibig sabihin halimbawa ako yung holder. Okay? Nag-presentment for acceptance ako dun sa drawee. Okay? Ngayon, Inaccept niya, pero na-separate paper. Now, under the law, pwede kong insist that the acceptance must be written on the face of the instrument. Eh, paano kung ayaw niya? I can treat it as a dishonored bill. Now, anong reason dito? Actually, ang reason kasi is, malilimit yung liability niya. Kasi pag binasa mo yung section 135, sabi dyan, an unconditional promise in writing to accept the bill before it's drawn, is deem an actual acceptance in favor of every person who upon the fate thereof received the bill for value. Okay? Uh, tapos, pag binasa mo yung section 134, ito yung uh, reason, <clears throat> when an acceptance is written on the paper other than the bill itself, it does not bind the acceptor. Though. O ibig sabihin lang, hindi binding sa acceptor. Okay? Except in favor 
of a person to meet shown and when the fate thereof receive the bill for value. Yan yung reason behind the law kung bakit pwede nang insist ng okay holder na yung acceptance must be written on the face of the instrument. Hindi na sa paper attached there to called a launch. Okay? Kasi kung ayaw niya, though you may now treat the bill as dishonored bill. Okay, now, the draw is allowed 24 hours after presentment in which to decide whether or not he will accept the bill. The acceptance is given date as of the day of presentation. Okay, kumbaga binibigyan dito ng batas ang drawing ng 24 hours to make up his mind whether or not he want to become acceptor. Kasi remember, ang drawing is not liable until and unless he accept the instrument. Pero the moment na in-accept niya ito, then magiging party primary liable siya, magiging acceptor siya under Section 62. Kaya binibigyan siya ng batas ng 24 hours para makapag-isip whether or not he want to become liable on the instrument. At yung 24 hours, sufficient enough na yan, okay, para makapag-isip yung drawing nga kung magiging liable ba siya, okay, kung gusto niya magiging liable on the instrument. Okay, <clears throat> ngayon sabi dyan, when a draw without to whom a bill is delivered for acceptance, destroy the thing. Kaya alibaba, nag-presentment for acceptance ka, itong drawy, ba pinunit bigla? Pag pinunit niya yan, hindi yan dishonored by non-acceptance, that is deemed accepted. Tawag natin dyan, constructive acceptance. Okay, o kaya sabi dyan, refuses within 24 hours after such delivery or within such other period as the holder may allow. To return the bill accepted or non-accepted to the holder, he will be deemed to have accepted the same. Pero malamang may question kay Sir, paano ko nabawa nag-presentment for acceptance ka ng February 15? Meron siyang 24 hours hanggang February 16. E eh, nag-lapse yung period, hindi in-accept. Okay, ano yun? Deemed accepted ba siya? Or dishonored by non-acceptance? Answer, dishonored by non-acceptance siya. Okay? Now, Magiging constructive acceptance siya kapag ni-refuse. Ibig sabihin meron kang demand to return at ni-refuse siya to return the bill accepted or non-accepted. Okay, doon siya magiging constructive acceptance. Kaya pakicheck nyo yung word na refuses. <laughs> Within 24 hours, kaya ibig sabihin kung nag-refuse, okay to return, it means nagkaroon ka ng demand to return. Whether accepted or non-accepted. Pero kung nag lang yung period na 24 hours, that is dishonored by non-acceptance. <clears throat> okay, a bill daw may be accepted before it has been assigned by the drawer or while otherwise incomplete or when it's overdue or after it's been dishonored by a previous refusal to accept or by non-payment. But when a bill payable after sight daw is dishonored by non-acceptance and the drawer subsequently accept it, the holder in the absence of any different agreement is entitled to have the bill accepted as of the day of first presentment. Balikan ko na. Halimbawa, nag-presentment for acceptance ka. Okay? Nang February 15. Okay? Di ba meron siyang 24 hours hanggang February 16? Ang question, paano kung halimbawa yan ay 30 days after site? Kailan siya magmamature? 30 days after February 15? Or 30 days after February 16? Answer, 30 days after February 15. Kasi nakalagay dyan, okay, the acceptance is given date as of the day of presentation. Kaya mag-start ng counting yung 30 days after site, okay, doon sa date of presentation. Pero, question, what if February 15, presentment for acceptance? February 16, din is honored by non-acceptance. February 17, nag-change yung mind niya, in-accept. Now, ang tanong, kailan siya mag-start kung 30 days after site siya? 30 days after February 15, 16, or 17. Answer, February 15 pa din. Kasi nga ang sabi dito, when a bill payable after site, this is honored by an acceptance, and the drawee subsequently accept it, the holder, in the absence of any different agreement, is entitled to have the bill accepted as of the date of the first presentment. Okay, ito may natanong na dati before sa board exam. Okay, yung kind of acceptance. Okay, ang acceptance kasi pwede general, pwede daw siyang qualified. Pag general, it means assent without qualification to the order of the drawer. Meaning, susundin daw lahat ng acceptor, lahat ng order ng drawer without any qualification. Okay, pero kung alibaw, ginawa, ginawa ko ganito. Accepted, payable, okay, PRTC, Manila, 
Okay, PRTC Manila. Is that a general acceptance or a qualified acceptance? Answer, okay, general acceptance pa rin siya. Kasi para maging qualified local siya, kailangan meron siyang word only or not elsewhere or no other place. Bawa, ginawa ko, accepted payable PRTC Manila only qualified local na siya. Okay, no other place, okay, qualified local. Kaya nga sinasabi dito sa okay, next sentence, an acceptance to pay at a particular place is a general acceptance unless it expressly states that the bill is to be paid there only and not elsewhere. Kaya kung wala siyang word only or na other word of exclusivity, then it means okay, general acceptance pa rin siya. Kaya yung kung qualified naman, sabi niya na acceptance is qualified which is pwedeng conditional, pwedeng partial, local, qualified as to time, acceptance of some one or more of the drugs but not all. Okay, conditional, sabi niya that is to say which makes payment by the acceptor depend on the fulfillment of condition therein stated. Partial naman, that is to say an acceptance to pay part only of the amount for which the bill daw is thrown. Kaya di ba sabi ko sa inyo, sa section 62, ang liability ng acceptor, hindi siya liable according sa tenor ng instrument, but rather liable siya according to the tenor of his acceptance. Okay? Wait lang. Okay. Now, uh, okay, balikan natin ito. Okay, yung sa partial, di ba sabi ko, uh, sa section 62 kasi, ang liability ng acceptor, hindi siya liable according sa tenor ng instrument, but liable siya according to the tenor of his acceptance. Kaya, basically, kung 100,000 yung instrument, in-accept niya for 80,000, then qualified siya, partial. Okay, local naman, that is to say, an acceptance to pay only at a particular place. Pero I repeat, para maging qualified local, dapat meron siyang word only or other word of exclusivity. Okay, qualified as to time, bawa accepted, payable 30 days after. Okay, naman, acceptance of someone or more of the drawings but not of all. Kasi alibawa, uh, ang drawings natin is A, B, C, D, E. Under the law kasi, kailangan mag-presentment for acceptance ka to each one of them. Di ang ginawa ko, nag-presentment for acceptance ako kay A, kay B, kay C, kay D, kay E. In-accept ni A, in-accept ni B, in-accept ni C, in-accept ni D, pero din is honored ni A. Now, under the law, qualified acceptance siya. Kasi acceptance siya by some, one or more of the drawings, but not all. Now, ano bang legal effect ng qualified acceptance? Kaya pag binasa mo kasi ang batas, ang sabi niya, ang holder daw, Entitled dyan for a general acceptance. Okay? Kaya kung hindi raw niya mag-obtain ang general acceptance, pwede niya itong i-treat as dishonored bill. Kaya alibawa ako si holder. <clears throat> Nag-presentment for acceptance ako sa drawing. Ang ginawa ng drawing, quinalified niya. Pwede kong i-insist na gawin niyang general acceptance. Kaya kung hindi ko ma-obtain yung general acceptance, I can treat the bill as dishonored bill. Okay, legal basis makikita niyo sa section 142. Sabi dyan, the holder daw may refuse to take a qualified acceptance. And if he does not obtain an unqualified acceptance, he may treat the bill as dishonored by non-acceptance. When a qualified acceptance is taken, sabi dyan, the drawer and endorsers are discharged from liability on the bill unless they have expressly or impliedly authorized the holder to take a qualified acceptance or subsequently assent their bill. When the drawer or endorser receive notice of qualified acceptance, he must within a reasonable time express his dissent to the holder or he will be deemed to have assented there. Kaya ibig sabihin lang, ako si holder, okay, nag-presentment for acceptance ako kay Drowy. Ang ginawa ni Drowy, quinalified niya. Pumayag yung holder. Discharge yung drawer and each endorser. Kasi dapat ang ginawa dito ng holder, kung quinalified ng Drowy, Dapat i-notify ka agad niya yung drawer and each endorser regarding qualified acceptance. 
Eh, pag natanggap naman nung drawer ni Chen Dorser yung notice for qualified acceptance, kailangan nila tong yung post within reasonable time. Otherwise, it means they have assented there. Nag-consent na sila. Kaya hindi nila discharge for secondary liability. Okay? Ngayon po na tayo dun sa section 143. Ito na tanong sa board exam. Siguro mga several times mga tatlong beses na. Okay, meron tayong uh, tatlong okay, instances wherein presentment for acceptance is required. Okay, in fact, if you read the last paragraph of section 143, sabi dyan, in no other case is presentment for acceptance necessary in order to render any party to the bill liable. Kaya ibig sabihin ng general rule talaga, hindi kailangan ng presentment for acceptance. Required lang ang presentment for acceptance pag nag-fall dito sa section 143. In fact, sabi ko nga, kahit nag-fall ng 143, may option dito yung holder eh. Either i-present niya for acceptance or second, i-negotiate niya within reasonable time. Pero pag wala siyang ginawa, then the drawer and each endorser are discharged. Papakita ko muna sa inyo ha, ito yung nakalagay sa batas. Pag binasa mo yung okay, section, okay, hindi uh, na pala nakalagay dito. Okay, pero by the way, makikita mo yan under the law. Okay, na kailangan, okay, dun sa presentment for acceptance kasi, may option nga kayo. Either mag-presentment for acceptance ka, or second, okay, in-negotiate mo siya within reasonable time. Pero pag wala kang ginawa, ang legal effect niya, the drawer and his endorsers are discharged. Okay, ngayon, ano ba yung nakalagay sa 143? Yung instances na kailangan ng presentment for acceptance. Number one, okay, when the bill daw is payable after sight, or in any other case where presentment for acceptance is necessary in order to fix the maturity of the instrument. Kaya pag-check nyo na lang sa problem kung nakalagay 30 days after sight, okay, it means kailangan ng presentment for acceptance. Pero kung 30 days after date, hindi kailangan ng presentment for acceptance. Pangalawa, okay, when the bill expressly stipulates that it shall be presented for acceptance, may express agreement daw na kailangan may presentment for acceptance. And last, When the bill is drawn, it's payable elsewhere than at the residence or place of business of the drawing. Okay. Ngayon. Okay, by whom class? Sino bang dapat mag-presentment for acceptance? Sabi yan, presentment for acceptance must be made by or on behalf of the holder. Kaya dapat ang mag-presentment for acceptance yung holder o kaya yung kanyang duly authorized agent. Okay, at a reasonable hour on a business day. Take note before the bill is overdue. To the drawee, okay, ibig sabihin ito naman, to whom, to the drawee, or some person authorized to accept or refuse acceptance on his behalf. Okay, ibig sabihin yung drawee o kaya yung kanyang duly authorized agent. Okay. Ngayon, sabi dito, when the bill is addressed to two or more drawees who are not partners, sabi ko, naka-address siya, to A, B, C, D, and A. O, ibig sabihin may joint drawees dyan. Kaya sabi ng batas, kailangan mag-presentment for acceptance ka to each One of them. Okay? Ngayon, kung in-accept ni A, B, C, D, but not A, qualified siya. Okay? Sabi ko nga sa inyo, pag qualified dyan, okay, pwede siyang i-treat ng holder as dishonored bill. Kaya tingnan mo ha, sabi dyan, when a bill is addressed to two or more drawers who are not partners, presentment must be made to them all. Unless one has authority to accept or refuse acceptance for all. In which case, presentment may be made to him only. Ngayon, when the drawee is dead naman, presentment may be made to his personal representative. Kaya kung patay na si drawee, pwede ka mag-presentment for okay uh, acceptance sa kanyang executor or administrator. Next, when the drawee has been a judge or bankrupt or insolvent or has made an assignment for the benefit of creditors, presentment may be made to him or to his trustee or assignment. Okay, when? Okay, a bill may be presented for acceptance on the day on which negotiable instrument may be presented for payment under the provision of Section 72 and 85 of this Act. When Saturday is not otherwise a holiday, presentment for acceptance may be made before 12 noon on that day. Now, may tanong lang ako. Ano bang pinagkaiba nito sa presentment for payment? Sa presentment for payment kasi, di ba pag payable ang demand siya, 
Okay, at promissory note, kailangan niya mag-presentment for payment within reasonable time after this issue. Pero pag, okay, payable on demand, tapos bill of exchange yun, it must be presented for payment within reasonable time after the last negotiation. Ngayon, pwede ba kayo mag-presentment for payment ng Saturday? Di ba? Pwede, before 12 noon, provided Saturday is not a holiday. Pero kung halimbawa, payable siya at fixed or determinable future time, hindi kayo pwede mag-presentment for payment ng Saturday. Kailangan mag-presentment for payment ka on the following business day. Okay, kaya kung nag-fall siya ng Saturday, hindi pwede. Sunday, hindi pwede. Monday na. Pag Monday is holiday, then Tuesday. <coughs> Okay? Uh, pero dito, sa presentment for acceptance kasi, irrelevant kung payable on demand or fixed or determinable future time. Basta ang rule dito, pwede kayo mag-presentment for acceptance ng Saturday provided Saturday is not a holiday. <coughs> okay? Before 12 noon siya. <coughs> okay, next. When the holder of a bill drawn payable elsewhere than at the place of business or residence of the drawee, has no time with the exercise of reasonable diligence to present the bill for acceptance before presenting it for payment on the day it falls due. The delay caused by presenting the bill for acceptance before presenting it for payment is excused and does not discharge the drawer and endorser. When a bill is duly presented for acceptance and is not accepted within the prescribed time, the person presenting it must treat the bill as dishonored bill. Okay, by non-acceptance or he lose the right of recourse against the drawer and endorser. <coughs> Okay? Kaya ibig sabihin ko nag-presentment for acceptance ka at di siya in-accept, bigay ka na kagad ng notice of dishonor by non-acceptance. Otherwise, the drawer and its endorsers are discharged. In relation to Section 151, ha, sabi niya, when a bill is dishonored by non-acceptance and immediate right of recourse against the drawer and endorser accused of the holder and no presentment for payment is necessary. Ngayon, sinabi dito, hindi kailangan ng presentment for payment. Bakit? Kasi kung halimbawa, dinishonored na siya by non-acceptance, Diba? Tapos nagbigay ka na ng notice for dishonor by non-acceptance, hindi na kailangan ng subsequent presentment for payment. Kasi ang reason dyan, futile act na siya. Kasi kung dinishonored na siya by non-acceptance, it means hindi na siya babayaran. Kaya hindi na kailangan ng subsequent presentment for payment. Ang exception lang, pag nagkaroon ng subsequent acceptance. Kasi kung halimbawa, biglang dinishonored siya by non-acceptance, biglang nagbago isip, in-accept niya, then kailangan nyo ng subsequent presentment for payment. At pag dinishonored by non-payment, dapat magbigay ka ng notice of dishonor by non-payment. Okay, buta naman sa protest. Okay, when a foreign bill appearing on his face, tingnan mo, dapat appearing on his face, kasi kung alimbawa foreign bill siya, pero hindi naman siya nag-appear sa face ng instrument, then pwede pa rin siyang i-treat ng holder as an Indian bill. Can he required ang protest? Kaya kailangan ng protest pag foreign bill of exchange appearing on his face, it is honored by non-acceptance, it must be protested for non-acceptance. And second, foreign bill of exchange appearing on his face, it is honored by non-payment, it must be protested for non-payment. Otherwise, the drawer and its endorsers are discharged. Pero may exception, wherein protest daw may be dispensed with. Ang tanong, kailan pwedeng i-dispense with ang protest? Now, under the law, sabi dyan, a protest is dispensed with by any circumstances which would dispense with notice of dishonor. Ibig sabihin ko ano yung grounds natin wherein notice of dishonor may be dispensed with, ganun din yung grounds natin wherein protest may be dispensed with. Now, kailan ba pwedeng i-dispense with ang notice of dishonor? Balikan natin yung section 112. Sabi niya, a notice of dishonor though is dispensed with when after the exercise of reasonable diligence, it cannot be given to or does not reach the party sought to be charged. Kaya pwede kong palitan na a protest is dispensed with when after the exercise of reasonable diligence, it cannot be given to or does not reach the party sought to be charged. Okay, ngayon ito naman yung delay in noting or protesting is excused. Uh, parang same doon sa notice of dishonor. Ang ina-excuse dito is only the delay. But when the cause of the delay ceases to operate, required pa rin kayo magbigay ng okay, noting, uh, formal protest or noting before the notary public. <laughs> Okay, let us summarize yung protest. Sabi dyan, how protest is made. The protest must be annexed to the bill or must contain a copy thereof and must under the hand and seal of the notary making it and must specify the following. Nakalagay dun yung time and place okay, of presentment. The fact that presentment was made and manner thereof. 
the cause or reason for protesting the bill, the demand made an answer given, if any, or the fact that the drawer or acceptor could not be found, by whom? Sino mang dapat magbigay ng protest? Either number one, not a republic, or pwedeng any respectable resident in the place of dishonor in the presence of two or more credible witnesses. Now, when? Okay, when a bill is protested, such protest must be made on the day of its dishonor. Kung baga sa notice of dishonor, kung hindi dishonor, hanggang bukas pa eh, If parties are resigning on the same place. Eh. Pero dito, pag dishonor siya, ngayon, dapat ngayon ka mag either formal protest or note before the notary public. <coughs> where a bill must be protested at the place where it's dishonor. Pero sa notice of dishonor kasi yung place of dishonor is immaterial or irrelevant. Okay, now tingnan natin yung distinction between protest and notice of dishonor. Uh, una, ang protest kasi, nag apply lang sa foreign bill appearing on his face. Ang notice of dishonor, nag apply siya sa okay, other than foreign bill. Pwedeng promissory note. Okay. Uh, pwedeng mag apply rin sa uh, inland bill of exchange or foreign bill not appearing on his face. Pangalawang protest is always in writing. Samantalang ang notice of dishonor, pwedeng oral or in writing. Sa another, sa protest, pag we mo kasi yung protest, ang we mo dito, hindi lang yung mismong protest. We mo na rin yung presentment for payment as well as the notice of dishonor. Pero sa notice of dishonor, pag nagkaroon ka ng waiver, ang we mo yung mismong notice of dishonor. Next, sa protest, sinong gumagawa nito? By whom? Uh, notary public or pwedeng any respectable residence in the place of dishonor in the presence of two or more credible witnesses. Sa notice of dishonor, ang uh, nagbibigay nito, yung either holder, o kaya yung agent niya, or pwedeng any party to the instrument who might be compelled to pay the instrument. Okay, by the holder or his agent. Din. Okay, next protest made at the place where the bill is dishonored. Kasi dito material yung place of dishonor. Eh. Sa notice of dishonor, irrelevant yung place of dishonor. And last, sa protest made at the day of dishonor. Okay, doon naman sa notice of dishonor made within the time prescribed. Kasi magkaiba pag parties reside in the same place and parties residing at different place. Okay, itong acceptance for honor, hindi naman tinatanong normally sa board exam, pero may na question na natanong lang before sa board exam. Ano ba yung second ano ba yung liability ng acceptance for honor? Is that primary or secondary? Ah, uh, answer is secondary. Pag ginasa mo kasi yung section 165, mapapansin mo, uh, conditionally liable yung acceptance acceptor for honor. Kaya nakalagay diyan, the acceptor for honor by such acceptance engaged that he will on due presentment pay the bill according to the term of his acceptance. Provided, o ayan, may condition siya, it shall not have been paid by the drawing and provided also that it shall have been duly presented for payment and protested for non-payment and notice of his honor given to him. Kaya ibig sabihin, mapapansin mo doon sa section 165, conditionally liable si acceptor for honor. Kaya lalabas, isa siyang party secondary liable. Kasi ang sabi ko nga, ang definition ng party primary liable, ito yung party who is absolutely bound to pay. Eh, kapag party secondary liable ka, conditionally bound to pay. Tapos tandaan nyo, nakalagay sa section 161, yung acceptor for honor, nakalagay, dapat, accept na not overdue, dapat pati total stranger ka. Nakalagay dyan na not being a party already liable. Unlike doon sa ordinary acceptance kasi, di ba? Uh, ang ordinary acceptor is the drawing. But in uh, acceptance for honor is the, the acceptor for honor is a total stranger on the instrument. Kaya pag tinignan mo yung uh, distinction between acceptance for honor sa ordinary acceptance, una sa acceptance for honor kailangan may previous protest kasi nag-apply lang to sa okay for in bill. So ordinary acceptance, protest is not required. Next, acceptance for honor, the acceptor must be a total stranger, while in ordinary acceptance, the acceptor must be the drawing. Next, in acceptance for honor, consent ng holder is required, hindi siya required sa ordinary acceptance. Next, acceptance for honor, these are party secondary liable, yung ordinary acceptor is party primary liable. Next, acceptance for honor, there may be several acceptor for honor for different parties in the bill. Pero ordinary acceptance naman, there can be no acceptor in alternative or in succession. Bawal yan sa section 1. Okay, third. Okay. Uh, another is acceptance for honor. Bill is not discharged upon payment by the acceptor for honor. Okay, so ordinary acceptance. Bill is discharged upon payment by the acceptor. Kasi di ba lumalabas yung party primary liable kasi. Okay, sa ordinary access, sa bill of exchange is the 
oxator. Kaya ibig sabihin, okay, yung uh, lumalabas dito na ordinary acceptor, party prima reliable yan. Kaya pag binayaran niyang instrument, madi-discharge yung instrument. Pero dito, since yung uh, acceptor for honor is on the party second reliable, hindi siya principal debtor. Kaya lumalabas, okay, yung payment niya will not discharge the instrument. Now, let us define promissory note. Okay, sabi dito sa section 184, uh, unconditional promise in writing made by one person to another, signed by the maker, engaging to pay on demand or at a fixed or determinable future time, some certain in money, to order or to bear it. When a note now is drawn to the maker's own order, it's not complete until endorsed by him. Okay, pag kinanong ka, what are the requisite of a negotiable promissory note? Balik ko rin ang section 1. First, it must be in writing and signed by the maker. Second, it must contain unconditional promise to pay a sum certain in money. Number three, it must be payable on demand or on a fixed or determinable future time. Number four, it must be payable to order or bearer. Huwag mong isama yung last paragraph ng section 1. Kasi yung section 1 paragraph, eh, nag-apply lang sa negotiable bill of exchange or check. <coughs> Okay, now let us proceed now sa definition of check, section 185. Sabi dyan na check daw sa bill of exchange, draw na ng bank, payable on demand. Okay, pag tinanong ka what are the requisite of a negotiable check, first it must be in writing and signed by the drawer. Second, it must contain unconditional order to pay a sum certain in money. Number three, it must be payable on demand. Huwag mo isasama yung fixed or determined number future time kasi pag check, dapat always payable on demand. Wala siyang date of maturity. Next, it must be payable to order or bearer. Last, baguhin mo yung requirement ng Section 1. When a check is addressed to a drawy bank, he must be named or otherwise indicated therein with reasonable certainty. Kasi sa check, dapat the drawy is always a bank. Because if the drawy is not a bank, that is not a check, that is a bill of exchange. Now, a check must be presented for payment within reasonable time after its issue. Or the drawer will be discharged from liability thereon to the extent of the loss caused by the delivery. Ulitin ko ha, sa promissory note, pag payable on demand, it must be presented for payment within reasonable time after its issue. Pag bill of exchange payable on demand, it must be presented for payment within reasonable time after last negotiation. Pag check payable on demand, it must be present, uh, check payable, syempre always payable on demand yan, it must be presented for payment within reasonable time after its issue. Kaya yung PN sa ka check, same ang reckoning period, within reasonable time after its issue. Ang na iba lang, yung uh, negotiable bill of exchange, payable on demand. It must be presented for payment within reasonable time after the last negotiation. Uh, take note nga pala, ha, hindi to absolute discharge. Madi-discharge lang dito ang drawer to the extent ng loss caused by the delay. When a check now is certified by the bank on which is drawn, the certification is equivalent to an accept. Kaya once the bank certifies the check, Okay, then the okay, the certifiers of check, then he become acceptor. Kaya magiging party primary di liable din siya. Kaya di ba sabi ko nga sa inyo sa section 189, ang drawy bank, ang role hindi yan liable. Until and unless he accept or certifies the check. <clears throat> okay, when the holder of a check procures it to be accepted or certified, the drawer and all endorsers are discharged. From liability thereon. Okay, pero take note para ma-discharge yung drawer and all endorsers, kailangan ang nagpa-certify must be the holder. Now, what are the distinction between check sa kabil of exchange? Okay, first, ang check always drawn against a bank or banker. Kaya ibig sabihin dapat sa check, the draw is always a bank. Pero sa bill of exchange, Okay, the drawee may or may not be a bank or banker. 
Second ang check is always payable on demand, pero ang bill of exchange pwede payable on demand or at a fixed or determinable future time. Next sa check, okay, kailangan dito ng uh, present, uh, hindi kailangan dito ng presentment for acceptance. Pero sa bill of exchange, hindi rin kailangan ng presentment for acceptance unless nag-fall nga siya ng section 143. Next sa check, drawer must have fund in the hands of the drawee. Kasi pag wala kang fund, tataka ng banko yan na drawn against the sufficient fund or no sufficient fund. Samantalang sa bill of exchange, the drawer need not have fun with the drawee kasi we are creating credit in a bill of exchange. Next on check, it must be presented for payment within reasonable time after its issue. Sa bill of exchange, payable on demand, it must be presented for payment within reasonable time after the last negotiation. And last, sa check daw, debt ng drawer on check revokes the bank authority to pay. Kaya pag nalaman na ng drawee bank, napatay na yung drawer, revoke ang authority ng drawee bank to pay the check. Pero sa bill of exchange, debt of the drawer does not revoke the drawee's authority to pay. Okay? Uh, okay. Gawa na lang ko ng separate video for the multiple choice. Okay? Check ko rin ba pang may ginagawa na record. Okay. 